such encouraging hearing Taylor uh, speak about Jesus and then you know I see him every day here uh, at morning prayers we have morning prayers here in the mornings sometimes five o'clock with this Bible and good morning Holy Spirit book you see walking around back and forth and praying honestly there is power in prayer it's one thing to be called you know I believe in Jesus but it's another thing when you obey Jesus and follow Jesus that's when the real transformation is taking place can somebody say amen we're so excited for this coming summer which already has begun about a few days into it graduation has happened most of you already are done with school and I believe from the teenagers to also every one of us young adults we're gonna see more people coming to morning prayers during the summer come on we're gonna see young people opening up home groups during the summer amen pulling out all the weeds in the church during the summer and also at my house in Jesus name <laughs> and we're gonna see awesome things happen during the summer we're gonna finish this second school of leaders during the summer and I believe that we are gonna be very close eventually to having 50 home groups and then we're just gonna be just beginning to have our 300 home groups for the glory of God amen you know we have a conference coming up in about 60 something days they're going to be our second conference this year and we're going to release finally our EP about six or five or six songs that we're going to release to iTunes that are own songs that we're just going to give God all the glory and all the power that we're going to see just awesome things you know I had a few goals this year for my summer some of them were personal but some of them for our ministry one of them was to have 50 home groups and the other one is to have four people and a staff in our church some of you don't know we actually have uh, we have three people on the staff in our church we believe in um, paying and we believe in setting people free so they can come from morning till evening and have their brains fried with only one thing how to bring more people to Jesus Christ how to raise more home groups and we believe that as a church the money shouldn't be just to buy new carpets and buy new rocks and new lawn and buy new signs but the church the money is supposed to be used to help us spread the message of the Lord Jesus Christ can somebody say amen you know our, our money is not to buy you know a sixty thousand dollar piano I know a friend of mine uh, I went to their summer camp once and I preached and they're like man it's so awesome that you guys have a pastor who believes in you know setting young people free so they can spend all day in church and give them you know some money so they could kind of focus on that and I was like well doesn't every pastor believes in that and they're like no you know our church you know we have two hundred thousand dollars in their savings account and I was like you have what like you can flip the whole city upside down with those money if you said you know 20 people free and let them work all day for God and I was like what do you guys spend money on and he's like well we have this awesome thing in our church we bought a $65,000 piano <laughs> I said you did what how many people got saved because of that piano I'm like and he's like well a lot of people probably not gonna come to our church because of that piano <laughs> you know our church doesn't believe in just buying you toys though we love toys in our church but we believe to see more people give their lives to Jesus Christ we believe I give financial sacrificially I teach about that you give sacrificially and all of that so we can see more and more people serving Jesus Christ I believe one day we're gonna have more than 300 people on the staff in our church for the glory of God can somebody say amen and this and this is gonna be just like a staff meeting for the glory of God there's a lot of other churches in the United States who have that why not if God can use them God can use us for his glory can somebody say amen so with that said this week actually we had one more person that joined our staff and so we're gonna have actually four people that will be working tirelessly and so and there's more people that will be volunteering more people that will be helping and all of it is going to be to push the kingdom of God further we are not stopping we are not backing down and we are not going backwards the path backwards has been burned long time ago we are not going to repeat what Lot's wife did looking back thinking about the old life we're only going to go walk forward thinking about the good things that God wants to do in our church and in our life in Jesus mighty name amen I feel like even this building very soon it's becoming too small our Wednesday services will be too small and we're going to have a lot of other awesome things that God is going to do in our midst in Jesus mighty name can somebody say amen I want to tell you something that our church has a vision we have a purpose but every vision requires to be paid for a price that's why morning prayers exist prayers don't exist because we're more radical than other churches prayers exist is because we don't have what it takes to reach our vision without the Holy Spirit we lean on the Holy Spirit so heavily I appreciate each one of you who wakes up every morning grabs their Bible comes in to see God those of you who are doing it at home I encourage each one of you this summer as I was challenging one young lady and I said you're not going to school you're not working this summer I want to see you here every morning 
come spend a few hours in prayer with the Holy Spirit let's believe that this summer we will grow we will go further that you will have your own home group and I give you the same challenge today in Jesus mighty name God has a plan and a purpose for your life summer is not just to get a tan and get your beach body summer is a time to get into your spiritual body like a warrior for the glory of God amen with that said in first John chapter 4 verse 8 apostle John tells us that in fear he said there is no fear in love but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment and the one who fears is not made perfect in love the perfect translation says in fear there is torment now it's interesting that apostle John tells us something very interesting that he says where there is love there is no fear in love he says but perfect love drives away fear because where fear there is torment see many of us when we receive Jesus Christ we receive God's love in our heart in the form of the Holy Spirit God's love is not some liquid thing that you have in your heart floating from one side of your heart to another and then during worship you feel it stirred God's love is a person the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us and the scripture tells us that when we have the Holy Spirit in him because of him we don't have fear we don't have torment and you can add to word torment here all other negative words we don't have defeat we don't have sickness we don't have depression and everything and you may say well that sounds really cute Vlad but the reality is I have the Holy Spirit and I still have fear I still have maybe pain or maybe I still have torments or I still have nightmares or I still have certain challenges in my life but Apostle Paul, Apostle John breaks this down for us and he says that it's not love in us that causes fears to vanish. So it's not the coming of God's love, it's not the presence of God's Spirit that immediately removes all the fears, all the darkness and all the problems. He says it's the perfect love. Word perfect in the Bible always means, usually most of the time it means mature. So what it's saying is this, is that the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life does not guarantee a victorious life yet. But when I have a relationship with the Holy Spirit that's maturing, that maturing relationship has the power to begin to squash and drive away like the power of God all the fear all the torment all the struggles and all the demonic attacks that I still encounter that's why you can meet a Christian who has the Holy Spirit and he still has certain addictions maybe TV maybe overeating some of you you know always thinking about drugs and pornography but there are other addictions that we have the addictions to cussing addiction to these things and you may say he is not a real Christian he can have those things if he has the Holy Spirit but he cannot have those things if he chooses to grow in the Holy Spirit people always have a problem especially when they see in our churches when uh, we cast out demons and we cast demons out out of Christians and they say you shouldn't do that what should we do leave them <laughs> the point people have is this Christians shouldn't have demons you're right Christians shouldn't cuss Christians shouldn't be depressed and Christians shouldn't have a depressing day but the reality is if a Christian has love but doesn't have a perfect love he can still have those things if a Christian has the Holy Spirit but a Christian doesn't grow and mature in the Holy Spirit a Christian can have hell inside of him if you have a house that you've built in Trey Cities for example let's say in Pasco you go to PUD you connect the electricity to your house you paid for all the connections which is a thousand dollars and then you pay for all other things and they connect the electricity to your house you walk into your house and your house is still dark and you're upset you walk to PUD and you say what is wrong with you guys I paid you a thousand dollars where is my light and the PUD they will look at your little their little papers they will look at their computer and they will say there is light in your house and you will take them to your house and say where is that light they say legally on the paper the light has been connected to your parcel but now it is your duty to bring that light into your house and it is your duty to turn that light on so you can have legally light on your parcel and be in pitch dark in your house 
that's how many Christians live they have the Holy Spirit inside of them because they believed in Jesus but because they are not developing and growing in that relationship their life still remains as the life of average person who doesn't have God if you think that you come to the front raise your hand and pray the sinner's prayer and your life will immediately flip it will only start flipping the real changes the real freedom the real changes in your whole life happens not just when you get the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit gets you when he gets activated when the Holy Spirit's power matures when his presence begins to mature in us and then our life begins to slowly but surely change my desire in the last two years my life has changed it's not changed a hundred percent but it changed dramatically in many different facets my deepest prayer is in the next two years it will change even greater than it changed last two years I am desperate this is not just empty words I'm pleading with God I am sacrificing enormous amount of money that I've never done before only for one thing God changed my life because I know one thing if this man is changed everyone who will listen it will come out of me on you and it will touch our congregation it will touch our leaders I was meeting with a, a young man today and um, we were you know, talking with him and very successful uh, businessman I drove in a very expensive car and so we were talking and I remember talking I was like I was like I feel like I'm so far from God he looked at me he's like if you are far far from God he said I'm definitely going straight to hell and I was like no I'm not comparing my life with you I'm comparing my life with what I'm supposed to be you all in me have to understand Holy Spirit wants us to mature grow and be activated for the glory of God can somebody say amen how do you activate the anointing how do you activate your relationship with the Holy Spirit you, you mentioned you saw how each person who shares a testimony in our church they begin to mention this person they call the Holy Spirit maybe you grew up thinking the Holy Spirit is a cloud or a force or he's a name for goosebumps or good feelings that you feel in the church but I want to give you a news flash Holy Spirit is a person who is alive with us today and he is like electricity that legally comes to your house but as a person he can be activated in your life or he can lay dormant and you can still live the same life as if you would without Jesus Christ I want to share with you just a few simple thoughts three thoughts on how to activate the Holy Spirit's presence and his anointing in our life but for that to happen let's open to Acts chapter 10 verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God what was with him and if we open to another verse in the Bible first John chapter 3 verse 8 it says the following for this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil somebody say amen so we see in Acts chapter 10, Apostle Peter is talking to Cornelius house and he's talking about Jesus. He's saying that Jesus, God anointed Jesus so that Jesus will go about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. God's anointing and God's Holy Spirit is activated when we do this one thing first. When we choose to live for the audience of one when we make the aim of our life not the applause of people but the approval of God no one can lead an orchestra without first turning his back toward the crowd and no one can truly follow God and have the Holy Spirit move in his life until he first makes one decision I turn my face toward God and my back toward everything else Holy Spirit lays dormant in people's lives who claim to believe in him but have no commitment to God whatsoever there's two ways you can check somebody's commitment toward God their calendar and their pocket not their mouth not their Facebook posts because Facebook posts are cheap 
when you pull out your calendar and you mark to me hours spent with God hours spent reading books podcasts or the Bible when you pull out your pocket and you simply say you tipped God just few dollars or you pull out your pocket and you say this certain percentage belongs to God I and the world around you can see one thing who have you turned your back to and your face to most of us want to see the Holy Spirit move in our lives but the problem is the cost is very high because the cost is this you have to give God your undivided attention but in order to do that you have to give all of your homies and cronies the second place the Bible says if we follow God we have to love everyone but the Bible does not guarantee that if we follow God everyone will love us and many Christians are fishing for everyone's acceptance let me tell you this straight up there will never be a day in your life where every person in your circle will applaud you and people are so fragile their opinions are so fluid they are not worth living your life for their approval whether they make billions or they maybe are just cute people they're still not worth living your life for it's good to love people but to live your life for their approval it quenches the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit becomes quenched in your life if you live your life not for his attention when Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit it was in Matthew chapter 3 when the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus something happened the Father on a big microphone in heaven has made this declaration and this statement he said this is my son in whom I am well pleased 30 years Jesus lived his life we don't see miracles recorded we don't see a lot of preaching done but one thing God summarizes 30 years of life as this he lived for 30 years of his life and I was the center of his attention and I give this approval those 30 years he pleased me well now I will give my power to him God doesn't give his anointing cheaply he gives it to people who say God I'm not perfect but I choose to surrender God I don't have what others have but God I choose to turn my face toward you and put you as first in my life God I don't have it all together but if one thing I have it together is this my back will never be always to your word it will be to my friends opinions of other people and my face will be toward you God can somebody say amen If we look in the Old Testament we will see that every great man of God every prophet that God used if we look at Enoch it says about him before he died God gave a testimony that he pleased God boom God took him we see Joseph a pagan Pharaoh looked at Joseph and said the Spirit of God is in you who can we find just like you but we see Joseph living his life when the temptation came in Joseph nobody was there to watch him he could have easily slip and and simply say it's a man's need to sleep with a woman and Joseph says no 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 if I am to protect the Holy Spirit who gives me supernatural things I'm gonna have to turn my back toward you wife of Potiphar and I'm gonna face the Holy Spirit I'm gonna honor the Holy Spirit and God honored them people like Isaiah, people like Jeremiah, people like Daniel, people like the Daniel's friends, people like David, they all had one thing in common, not all of these people were educated, not all of these people were rich, not all of these people were famous, but all of these people had one thing in their life that they had in common, they were not for sale, they were sold out, when the world knocked and the world says can you give me, can you give me a little bit of you, they said too late, I already gave it to God, that's why God used them the Bible says that's why God wasn't ashamed of them and the Bible says the world wasn't worthy of them and that's why God's spirit moved upon them because God's spirit could easily brag about them and say these are my men and I own them let's be those people today to activate the Holy Spirit we have to choose to do the first thing live for the applause of one can somebody say amen are you gonna live for the applause of God are you gonna live to please God if yes say yes with me We're gonna live for God's call. We're gonna live for God's cause and we're gonna live for God's purpose. 
But the second thing that I want us to point out today, how to activate God's anointing, uh, God's presence in our lives is do good to change the bad you see. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10 that Jesus anointed by the Holy Spirit went around doing good. Went around doing good. The Holy Spirit lays dormant in our lives. If after committing our life to God, first of all, realistically speaking, it is impossible to commit your life to God. And I mean truly, without after that, helping other people. It is impossible. When I meet people and they say that I committed my life to God, you may come to church, that is one thing. But when you truly commit your life to God, the one thing that you want to do is you're going to start helping other people. You're going to want to be a home group leader, not because home group leader is cool in a good news church, but because home group leader is the way you accomplish your purpose of helping other people to become discipled by Jesus Christ. You will automatically do that. But if you don't automatically kick, click in, I'm going to remind you of the scripture. When Jesus was anointed, why was he anointed? Because his life was pleasing to God. And not only in the beginning of his life, but even in the middle of his life when he was famous and when he already was known and thousands of people flocked to his meetings and people stood up. There was reputation going on and Jesus goes on the mountain of transfiguration and the father says, Jesus is still pleasing to me. He didn't get his eyes off of me to success and the ministry. He still has his eyes on me. That's why Jesus was anointed. He pleased his dad. He pleased God. If we choose to please God even when things get good or hard and we stick through it, God's anointing will rest upon our church. When right now we have more people coming, more leaders rising up, if we keep it in front of our face, the main thing, the main thing, which is the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, God's vindication will rest upon our life and God's anointing will not lift from our life. But the way God's anointing gets activated is not only when we please God, but also when we do good to change the bad we see. It's when we pour our life, not just in buying bigger rims, bigger houses, nicer things, but when we pour our life to help people. Now let me clarify something about helping people. Because when we read John 10, that Jesus went around doing good, we immediately, every person has a different definition of what it means to do good. Some people think Jesus went around giving people tacos. Some people Jesus think Jesus went around giving people free food and actually you are correct. Jesus went around giving people free food and when they came to him the next day for more free food, Jesus was upset because Jesus says, I'm not giving you free food just to stir up your bellies. I'm giving you true food because I'm trying to get into something that is eternal inside of you. It's called your soul. I don't mind feeding you every single day but if your soul is not what's touched, if you're not hungry and your soul is not changed inside, listen all of this is not gonna matter much, you're still gonna die. Jesus was doing good not just by helping with people's problems but by touching their soul which will never die. I want us to remember this, the best good when a soul is saved that's when we give somebody the highest good. The quote that I had is, salvation of the soul brings the most good to person's life. Salvation of the soul brings the most good to a person's life. I am a big fan of helping people. I am a big fan of helping people pay after debt. I am a big fan of helping people giving them cars. I'm a big fan of giving people houses when I pay off mine first. <laughs> I'm big fan of giving people clothes. I'm big fan of taking people on road trips, paying for them. I am all over that. Sending money to missions, I am big fan of that. But I want to tell you something from my own personal experience and from your experience also. That doesn't change people's heart. I had a person that we and my wife, um, we would, would say bluntly, we picked it up from the streets. This person was homeless. This person had nowhere to live and this person had no family. We built a room. In our old place we put this person there i found out that this person had a lot of debt we helped this person knock all the debt out when this person had still half of 700 dollars left in her debt we decided that me and my wife will pitch in and we will pay all of her debt on her birthday and we did that we tried to bring this person to church with us because all of this that we did our only aim was this so this person's heart will be changed and eventually when the car was paid off the car stopped working another person from the church pitches in and nice about five thousand dollar car and just gives it for free i mean everything started going well this person is completely out of debt 
has a place to live, has a job, has a financial aid, goes to school, seems like everything is well. Everything around is doing so good because all of us pitched in to do good. But the soul inside, if you would talk to this person, is the most negative person in the whole world. I've seen more positive people in jungles of Tanzania than I found in this person. And I said, we're bending backwards to help everything. But this person's soul was completely untouched. And the moment we moved out, out of that place, this person disappeared from a church like this. Why? Because the soul wasn't touched. And you know the funny part? In a very short, very short period of time, if you will look at this person's finances and if you will look at their life, their life is back in the same place that it was before. Why? Because the best good you do to somebody is not to give them a car. It's good to give them a car. But if their soul is not touched, a car won't change them. It's good to take out people, give them meals, teach them English, help them to ride, help them to go to school, pay for their scholarship. It's so good to give people money. All of that is great. But if their soul is not touched, listen, you have not done good. If a blind man is walking to a cliff and you give him a sandwich, you did good, all right. But he will die with a sandwich in his mouth. There's nothing wrong with giving a blind man a sandwich if you're blind. But if you can see and there is a cliff, the cry inside of your heart has to be, God, I'm giving this sandwich, but please help him not to die out of this cliff. That's one of the reasons why prayer is so important. Because I can give a car, you can give a meal to somebody, but only God can change somebody's soul. And when somebody's soul is changed, their life will be changed. The best way to change somebody's life is to flip their soul upside down. The Bible says, guard your heart above all things, for out of it springs the issues of life. Your soul is eternal. You may have an $85,000 car or you may come on a car that belongs to your parents, but you still have a soul that is priceless and your whole life your finances your health your relationships all come out of your soul they don't come out of your education they don't come out of your knowledge they don't come out of your bible knowledge they come out of your inside and if your inside is sick if your inside is empty listen you are an empty and a sick person maybe you're doing drugs and you're having fun maybe you're you're having a blast of your life i remember i met with one person and he's like man i don't understand i love drinking and I said, if you're in a prison that's made out of golden bars, you're still in a prison. If you're in a prison that has pillows and the pillows are soft, you're still in a prison. I'm like, buddy, you're bound. You're not free. You can't go one day without that stuff. Your soul inside is empty. Do you know why you need dr drinking? Because something inside is completely empty and drinking is trying to fill it and it's still not doing the job. My friend, why God wants us to save souls? why are we praying for souls some people think we're just trying to get people to be religious no we found out the best way to change their life is through their soul we have people here who work in schools who work as counselors and they will testify to you and i've counseled people myself if you give people advice give people counsel you may change a certain point of their life but until their soul changes until their mind until an inside their world which is eternal changes their life doesn't change you know I see every morning Brian Ashley just many months a few months ago Brian Ashley came in for the first time in our church and some of you knew he was addicted to drugs if I'm not mistaken overdosed three times and once he died lost his license had no car had no job and had no opportunities to work because of his record had to go, go to court for all kinds of classes every single day he comes in you know and sometimes you look at somebody's life like that you're like oh my goodness where do we start with the soul he said but well, we need to get a job we need to no 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 no. we need to get a soul right first and he started coming he started learning the bible he started praying and the soul got right first and the interesting part in a very short time court things begin to clear a sister gives him a car father gives him a job and now brian drives to morning prayers while he has his own job and one of the mornings yes and one of the mornings he walks around here he's praying he's like pastor where is the envelope and i said why do you need the envelope in the morning prayer he says i brought my first tithe and i need to honor god
when somebody's soul is changed give them a car and they'll make a use of it but if somebody's soul is not changed I remember you know a girl named Anna whose birthday actually it is today she came to our church and she and her boyfriend were living together they were living in sin they both professed to be Christians she comes in and God touched her God touched her heart Ilya was preaching that Sunday and she came to the front her relationship with her boyfriend was okay so somewhat he wanted to do this she wanted to do that and her relationship with her mom was so bad she deleted her mom out of her phone she wouldn't even look at her mom in the face but the first thing that we focused on is not getting her relationship with her boyfriend right but getting her relationship with her soul and her savior right the interesting part is when that happened two weeks later her boyfriend the one that she was about to leave gives his life to Jesus Christ also the interesting part is he already made plans to move out to Ellingsburg because they offered him a job there she says we're engaged you're going to Ellingsburg you're going alone I'm staying here because God touched my heart and I want him to continue this process he said well if you're staying here I'm staying here too what are you gonna do with the job I asked him he says I don't know but God will provide the interesting part that happened her relationship with her mom changed we met with her we gave her some tips something to do she goes in her mom is shocked was blown away because first time in three years her daughter acted like a daughter instead of a stranger her mom came for her baptism both of these people got married both of these people got baptized both of these people started a home group and the very job that was offered only in Ellingsburg became an opening in Tri Cities and last week he started to work here I see these stories left and right every day and this convinces me of one truth save a soul change a life when a soul is saved a life will be changed yes it will take some time but that time is going to be always for a person's good not against them can somebody say amen, amen. holy spirit's anointing is activated when we please god but his anointing is activated when we save souls can somebody say amen and i'm going to finish in this that the holy spirit's anointing is activated when we deal with the roots of the problems instead of their symptoms and I named it when we remove the problems from our life not just from our sight this came to me uh, from an inspiration I live very close to church and we have a lawn that is currently going through the process of deliverance because this lawn has a lot of weeds and weeds are not the problem but they have this particular weeds that I've discovered the name it's called crab weeds I know you thought I'm gonna say the other word it actually the real word for it is the other word but I'm going to use the godly one on the church crab weeds and these weeds are very unique because they have really thick and really big roots and they spread in like a net under the ground and what you do is if you go and you cut those weeds that kind of particular grass you cut the grass but the grass keeps growing because the grass is so deeply rooted in the soil that took and you can't pluck it out without actually using some 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 machinery or some kind of a tools to pluck it out because it has deep and very wide roots I went to local stores and I asked them if they, anybody could give me some kind of a chemicals to kill them and every single person said there is no chemicals against this kind of grass this, this afternoon I had a person who walked out from a special place and they said it's gonna cost five hundred five dollars if we spray it in August and it still doesn't guarantee that your crab grass will be gone he says the best way and the only way is really for you to start plucking it out by its roots not by its top which is something that I did before because see, I was I don't like to put my fingers into the dirt I'm just like you I need my fingers to be nice and so I would rather take a lawnmower and just cut it and make it look good for my side and remove the problem from my side but never really remove the problem from my soil and that's how many people live with the Holy Spirit we must understand Holy Spirit is never happy when you deal with the symptoms of your problems not with the roots of your problems why because Holy Spirit lives in the world we are afraid to get our hands into see I see the world of grass it's very familiar to me take a lawnmower and cut it take your your, your hands and and just simply take all of the grass out but there is a world that my eyes cannot see it's the world of dirt and it makes my hands feel uncomfortable and I am not sure what's going on in that world so I don't like to put my hands into that world but God the Holy Spirit lives in the invisible world where the roots of our problems are at see our problems are physical their roots are spiritual 
and the Holy Spirit lives in the spiritual world and in that spiritual world not only he lives he walks like a boss where all demons all curses are like cockroaches and he waits for them to crush them but he needs your permission to stop using a lawnmower on your problems he wants us to say holy spirit i don't know the realm of the spirit it's confusing the church doesn't like to talk about it and we get criticized for casting out of demons and talking about demons but you holy spirit that is your world the world of invisible so i'm gonna open my life to stop dealing with the symptoms of my problems and with you we will deal with the roots of my problems and then the holy spirit's power gets activated the bible says jesus went around healing those oppressed by the devil you know what that means that means the holy spirit was active because jesus wasn't just healing people he was dealing with things that were dirty because the moment he started casting out our demons you know what people did exactly what people do today uh these people are making this up uh it's a lot of actors you guys have out there in the church who do shaking shivering and shaking baking in the church We had a person who came once to a service and said exactly the same thing. He said, I wonder how much do you guys pay those people who shake and, and bake over there in the front? I said, how much do you want us to pay you? How much would you take? And I said, we don't pay nobody. I said, if we would pay one person, the secret would go out faster than you can imagine. There will be not one person at this prayers and not one person will see their life changed. The funny part, during the service, the very guy was in the front shaking and baking and you know what he was saying I'm anger I'm anger and I was like we didn't pay you did we and he came afterwards he said this is the power of God the power of Jesus the power of the Holy Ghost he says the power of the Holy Ghost I'm like ah <laughs> when it deals when we talk about curses when we talk about casting out of demons for many people this is like dirty stuff I don't want to deal with it but I want to encourage you with it might be dirty to the religious people it is very precious to the Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit sees those demons every day he lives in the invisible world you see people the way you see me the way you see your neighbor is the way Holy Spirit sees demons and curses and he hates them and he sees how much harm they cause people he want to squash and break their grip over your life but he can't do that if you walk around blind only dealing with just trimming your life trimming the alcohol trimming the cigarettes trimming the pornography trimming the anger trimming the abuse just dealing with the symptoms and holy spirit says come on give me a little room come on get your hands off of just trimming your symptoms let me get into the roots let's deal with some curses let's deal with the abuse let's deal with the generational curse let's deal with those things so i can finally release myself and you can be released also guys this stuff is serious this stuff is real I lost friends because we teach on these things but at first I was teaching it because my pastor was telling us to do so until we start meeting with cases where nobody could help until we would meet with young lady who a guy was interested in her she wasn't interested in him he cursed her and he said verbally that it will never work for you and you will never get married so she goes on from a relationship to a relationship and nothing works out until she finds this guy and they're already engaged everything is going toward the wedding and for no reason she has no feelings for him and I mean not as no feelings she has no feelings so bad that everything is about to stop until during one home group the Holy Spirit see in our home groups we get our hands dirty in our church I know it might not be pretty but it helps people and it clears our soil in the home group Holy Spirit gives her just this thought wait that's the curse on your life and they prayed in the home groups they got their hands into the soil put the root out within a very short time the feelings for this guy came back and she's happily married today I know that in my own family and in my own life when I married my wife when we moved to Tri Cities she moved to Tri Cities and for some time I started to see within a few months started to see loneliness in her at first I thought she's getting used to Tri-Cities, she's adjusting, I'm like it's fine, it's just gonna take a few more months, 
and she's gonna realize how beautiful this city is and how handsome and powerful I am and how good you guys are six months passed but it didn't end and I remember the triggering point for me was Tuesday after prayer we were sitting in a driveway on 214 Delafield Richland Washington and she didn't want to get out of the car and she was bawling we had an awesome prayer and she just says I can't take this no more I'm done I was like, done with who done with what she's like I can't do this I gotta go back I'm like where I'm like you're not going nowhere we have a ministry and here I am literally like a fish hitting in the ice on the top of that it always accompanied with nightmares almost every other day not every day but every other day there would be nightmares when I say nightmares in the dreams that she would see me being with someone else emotionally not physically but emotionally and it will hurt her so much that it will mess her day this continued for some time when we started to listen to about the things that there's curses and there's demons and one day she comes to me and she says I realized what happened she says the same thing is happening to her mom she said this loneliness she's like I see it and I was like I see the same thing when we would go visit your mom she's a wonderful lady but there's just something that's on it and she's like you know what it's the same thing that's tormenting me so the problem is not the church the problem is not you and the problem is not the people she said the problem is not even nightmares the problem is a demon of loneliness that hurts and torments my life and both of us it wasn't one prayer it wasn't even one prayer line and it wasn't a particular anointing water it was working with the Holy Spirit understanding this problem is not physical it's spiritual I can't tell you exact date but I can tell you that it's been a very long time when we were trying to and I told you the story we were trying to bring her sister who was her best friend to Tri-Cities because we thought maybe it will make things easy and then for no life her sister didn't want to come to Tri-Cities she didn't like anybody in Tri-Cities and it was such a complicated and then when this spirit broke off the first thing that happened is the nightmares ceased where they were happening every other night and if they happen once a month or once in six months it will happen so light that Lana will tell me later on in the week say oh I had a nightmare I crushed it before I got up and then her sister for some odd reason like my brother and my brother for some awesome reason I like the sister and they're getting married this weekend and I told my wife I was like when we needed her she wasn't here when we don't need her lo she ran here I didn't say we don't love her I just said we didn't need her and yes we do need her but the issue is this I saw it firsthand how a demon can torment someone's life right in your own house and it's painful and it hurts and therefore I want to tell you something we don't care what other people will think we care what Jesus did and we care that the Holy Spirit remains active we will cast out demons we will come against the devil we'll break the devil's strongholds and we will see people set free for the glory of God you may say well I'm afraid of this whole demon thing I'm afraid of shake and bake listen that's not about shaking and baking it's about the Holy Spirit it's about him working mightily in your life can somebody say amen don't be afraid of the devil because Holy Spirit is supreme in this world and Holy Spirit is on your side can somebody say amen with that said I want us to rise right now let's come to the front and we're all gonna pray come on church let's come to the front